Okay, reaction time to the latest your VR video released on their YouTube channel. Uh, so I'm going to watch through and just give some of my thoughts and opinions. So here we go. Hi everyone, I'm George from VR, and this is VR Suite, our latest development. We have been working on this device for a year, so now I'm very happy to present it to you today. It's really good to see the CEO of the company doing this video. Um, and uh, I think it's, it's a, a step in the right direction. This is a 3D web motion simulator. That means it can move or rotate in three different directions. And we also have vibrations. If we are talking about a motion simulator, my personal opinion is that the most important question is the motion itself. I mean the speed of the motion or the range of the motion. I'm proud to say that we are the market leader in both parameters. That means we have the highest motion range on the market and we have the highest angular velocity on the market also. Of course, I will show you the motion capabilities of the simulator very soon. But before that, I want to talk about uh, the simulator, the new device. Um, so, I mean, I wasn't aware that they were the large, like the largest range of motion, but it doesn't really surprise me. Um, it's interesting. So one of some of the other competitors don't think that you need, or even friends of mine don't think that you need that full range of motion to trick the brain. I, I, I tend to be more in the camp of, at least in my experience, I like it better when I move more. But that said, um, I have been in a flight in a Cessna recently and I was blown away at how subtle the movement, uh, the effect of movement and rolls and things affected the body. Um, so uh, I think one of the last frontiers when all of the things are in line for this, the hardware, the software and everything is going to be tweaking profiles to... Um, the game profiles to really give realistic feedback. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, which is a little bit different, or let's say quite different uh, from our previous device, ya 2.5. If you look at it for the third side, maybe it's very similar to ya 2.5, but if you look at it a little bit more close, you will see lots of differences like the bottom part uh, where we build together the rotation and the 2D platform uh, and uh, the device uh, is much more compact because of that and uh, we could reduce the height of the simulator and the reduced height makes the simulator more stable. I think this was also a masterstroke decision to lower the, the SKUs, effectively the amount of different types of hardware. So. Originally with the Yaw 2, they had a version without rotation, which is kind of funny given their name is Yaw VR and they had it, an option to get it without Yaw. But it, it is much lighter than the Yaw 2 and part of that I think is the base, the changes in the base have simplified things a lot. And even it's much easier to get in and get out from the simulator. We have simplified the footrest as well and the central holder now connected or mounted to the footrest by screws so it's much more stable and rigid. Another important change that the simulator now is wireless, completely wireless, except the power cable of course. So the network and the USB is also wireless. That means uh, you will find on the simulator some USB slots and a network connector as well. And if you plug in some USB accessories like steering wheel or joystick or something, then uh, on your computer immediately will appear as a regular USB device and, uh, and it works completely wireless. So you don't have to worry about the cable management anymore and so on. I think I can take some credit for this. Um, I made a video back in my Your One days where I created a battery box that used virtual here, which is software developed by a fellow Australian that gives you that wireless USB capability. Um, so um, it, it, to me, it made sense for that to be a default feature and it reduced the requirements of the slip ring because I didn't have to pass those USB lines through that and have the inherent potential for reliability issues that came with that. Wireless, I think, is 
the way of the future for many things. Uh, so it's it's made sense. One. Uh, and the same with the network, so the network would uh, work via Wi-Fi. But if you want to use the simulator by cable network, then we can recommend to use uh, PowerLAN or Power Ethernet. That means you can plug a, a device on the power outlet and plug another device into the power outlet on the device because we have 220 volts or 110 volts uh, on, on the device itself, so you can you can power uh, accessories which necessary uh, some extra power over the USB power. So this is really great option if you're and you're have learned this the hard way. If you're at conferences where there's a huge amounts of traffic on the Wi-Fi connection, then using power line is a pretty valid option to um, circumvent the problems related with that. So you can use that uh, power at the Ethernet or power <coughs> LAN and it works uh, very nicely. Another new feature is the seat adapter. Uh, we replaced it a little bit, we further developed it. Now it... This is the first time I'm seeing this and um, I did a live stream with Zolt last night and I was talking about the, the lack of as many places to potentially mount things and I... Uh, particularly with base kickers as, as the focus. And as we'll see, I believe that you could fit it inside this um, angled seat, uh, seat, seat, <laughs> seat for the seat. It's tilted forward by 15 degrees. That means it uh, tilts forward the chair uh, by 15 degrees. And because of that, the distribution of the forward and backward uh, tilt movement is much equally distributed. That means uh, before that, uh, the backward tilt was too much. If you're watching this as someone who's potentially planning to buy, just to let you know, if you use it's VRK as the code at checkout on the Your VR store, you'll get a discount on your purchase. Basically, it was almost over 90 degrees. So so it, it, uh, the, the feeling was that you were falling out uh, from the chair, which is a nice feeling, but, but it was too much. Uh, I think uh, no uh, this is very true. There's um, because the range of motion is very similar to the earlier year two. And there was a few of us that basically got stuck backwards. I think this is a very good trade off to give you more forward feeling, um, almost throwing you out of the chair forward and just reducing the backwards movement a little bit. Nobody uh, utilize uh, the whole motion range to backward, but uh, forward it was a little bit weak. Uh, so right now, because <coughs> you tilt forward the seat, uh, you can tilt forward much more and you feel the gravity and, and it's a very nice feeling, but still you have a... This also for me is an improvement because if you see my point down here, there's a hole and then there's an also a hole up here where I, I've put ring bolts on here to clip my belt, uh, seat belt onto. And this is actually going to improve where the seat belt base uh, angle comes out. It's a little bit high at the moment, so I'm happy to see this. A very, very good uh, tilt backward. It's still uh, comfortable, but, uh, but very good feeling and, and uh, a great experience. By the way, this uh, chair adapter, the new seat adapter, can be applied or can be mounted on the R2 and the R2.5 devices as well. Now, I expect this is going to be a default option with uh, your threes going out from now on. Um, I will be asking and I'll put a comment um, on, on the video confirming whether or not that's the case and how people who've already received a unit can get a hold of one. There are some other important features, but inside the simulator, for example, we replace the driving mechanism to timing belt. Before that, we used uh, cogwheels, but now we are using uh, timing belt. And, uh, and timing belt is a very good solution because we could reduce the weight of the device by... Not only reduce the weight, but ra drastically increase the accuracy the, the whole idea of timing belts is there's no backlash, no slop in the movement and the gears didn't have a lot, but they were much louder because of the meshing of the gears and also 
had to have backlash. So that's definitely been removed. And in my sound comparison video, um, which I'll add in the show notes, you can see movement in the same game that the your three moves much more accurately and stops much more abruptly, whereas the your two was more of a sort of a slow down to a stop. I fifty percent. That means right now the whole device without the chair is about thirty five kilograms, and before that it was seven. It's so much lighter. I can actually lift up the whole pitch. I take the seat off, but I can lift up the pitch unit by myself, whereas I always had to get my oldest son to come and help me previously. Uh, when the courier dropped it off, he just carried the pitch box in by himself by basically hugging it. Or something. And the timing belt is much more silent. You will see a, a, a noise test uh, very soon. And the motion is smoother and maybe according to my feeling is a little bit more dynamic and more precise as I told you. So these are the most important new features and uh, I want to tell you that we have been tested this device for about uh, six months with users. We have sent it out uh, to our Kickstarter backers a few devices um, for some uh, buyers and they have been testing it uh, for four months. And, uh, and I'm very, very happy to say that we experienced just a few issues. Most of the issues was related to the uh, shipping, uh, the shipping damages. Uh, um, this happened to me. So, you know, it's very easy to say that none of the issues, well, maybe none of the showstopper issues that I saw were related to manufacturing. They were all damage, which looks like it was from shipping. Um, they're, it's very hard to say 100%, but um, definitely once those issues were resolved, there was no issues. Like there was a few bent parts that were very clearly shipping damage um, and your resolved that issue quite quickly. Um, and they're doing their best to make sure that doesn't happen moving forward just because it costs them more money every time that happens. They, you know, it's in their best interests to have it arrive to you as uh, in as good shape as possible. But I've spoken to other people like uh, a competitor who, who also um, confirmed that since COVID, they've seen a lot more shipping damage themselves as well. So, uh, But of course, there were some other kind of issues like uh, the rollers, uh, the quality of the rollers. Uh, sometimes the timing belt was damaged also after a while. Uh, but we, we just replace the technology and uh, fix all these issues time to time. I've seen several, like Zolt has sent me photos of fixes that were from suggestions that I made. Um, and there's another one that should be coming soon for the footrest. But, you know, this, these should all be fixed in outgoing units from now on. Be, I expect there'll be very minor iterations from now on. Uh, this device is ready. And, and you can buy it. Uh, there you go. It's ready. Uh, again, if you're looking to buy it, you can use the coupon code It's VRK to uh, get a discount at checkout. Uh, anytime we can ship it uh, in 10 days. By the way, Kickstarter backers, you may heard about that we had a very successful Kickstarter campaign uh, two, three years ago. Uh, but unfortunately, we couldn't fulfill all the orders uh, yet for our Kickstarter backers. And, and uh, you can read some comments and some articles about that we are a scammer company and we steal your money and so on. It's absolutely not. We have some issues with the delivery to our Kickstarter backers. It's a well-known fact. Uh, we are working on it and uh, we have made some great progresses. We already started. So I've been a long time user of Kickstarter um, and backed multiple projects that took longer to deliver than expected and some that never delivered. And I think the key thing, well, number one, I purchased the Your One at retail after their original Kickstarter for that. They, they took a long time to deliver the Your Ones, but they did as well. And um, the biggest thing, and this is largely Zolt um, for me, is it's just how genuine he's been, how forthcoming whenever I've asked questions, how forthcoming he's been with information when I haven't even asked it. Um, he just comes across very genuine to me. 
Um, and the fact that they, you know, they have started delivering Kickstarter units, some of those are to people who've paid additional because of the, the big change in costs to your... Um, but they have said many times that's an optional thing. You don't have to do that and they're doing their best and they've structured things in a way that they have a path to be able to deliver. And, you know, I really believe that they're doing their best to achieve that. Um, but the reality is um, we all took a risk on Kickstarter. Like I've heard of, of one campaign that took 10 years to deliver but did deliver, like amazing. But God, God forbid, it's not going to take that long for you all to do that. So our restart did the deliveries to our backers and we are working on raising capital to spend it on to deliver uh, as much Kickstarter devices as possible. Uh, and they have committed that um, it's it's very big part of their negotiations with potential investors that one of the key things is that the investment will go towards funding delivery to backers. So that they're really doing the right thing from that perspective. It's 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 undoubtedly made it harder for them to find an investor, but it's the right thing to do. As soon as possible. So so we are on the good track or the right track and you can order this device now and we can deliver to you in 10 days. As I said, use code it's VRK to get a discount at checkout. That'll get you 150 US off and I'll also get the same amount as a referral effectively. And you get one year warranty. And you can pay by credit card, which is a very safe payment option because you can take a chargeback action easily anytime if we don't deliver the device on time. So this is about Yas3 and uh, let's see now the motion capabilities. As also, like the fact that they're enabling that payment by credit card means that it doesn't make sense for them to incur lots of chargebacks because that will affect their ability to use credit anyway so you know they really intend to deliver uh, it's very good for your own peace of mind that that's now an option because previously it wasn't but uh yeah it's they're they're moving in the right direction in so many ways as i promised before including how good this video is to me it's like it's not over the top marketing it's just stating things as they are showing how they are it's really good so let's start the motion demonstration that means motion range and speed uh, first, uh, let me show you the motion range. Uh, for that, I will use this controller. Uh, this is an Xbox controller. Uh, and we use our game engine. Uh, you can program the controller in the game engine and assign different inputs to different motions. Right now, for example, these uh, shutters uh, are connected to the pitch. Oh, no, uh, sorry, to the yaw. And... Uh, and this joystick is for the pitch, and this one is for the roll. Okay, so let me start with the pitch motion range. Uh, we have around 70 degrees uh, motion range on the pitch. That means if I uh, tilt forward, this is around 21, 22 degrees, and and I feel I really feel that I'm falling all out from uh, from the simulator. So and he just did that slowly. Like if you're in a game and it swings forward, you're going to feel like you're getting ejected out the front, I think. It's a very cool feeling. And if I'm going backward, it's also very spectacular and great feeling because I feel the gravity and it's, it's still a little bit scary because I feel that, okay, I'm, I'm going back and I will fall. The very good thing here is that it, it really looks like that angle is not enough that if you shift your body weight forward, it will still help you go forward if, let's say, you lost power or something. Um, on the Yaw 2, I got stuck backwards and luckily one of my kids was close by and was able to pull me forwards. But that that seat, the change to the seat angle with that 15-degree riser, I think is a very, very, very wise move out from the seat <coughs> but uh, much more comfortable as before and uh, and it's it's absolutely enough for any kind of game so I'm I feel I'm going straight forward to the sky uh, so I don't need uh, more tilt backward the next motion is the roll which is the left and right so here maybe you can see now 
better. We have around 20 degrees to the right and another 20 degrees to the left. It's around 19, uh, 20 degrees. Uh, so altogether it's 40 degrees, which is very nice. Uh, but it's enough. Uh, we, we could increase the rotation to left and right, but we felt uh, that it's, it's enough. Uh, you don't need more because... Again, I think if, if it was increased and you moved quite rapidly, it almost feel like it's going to whiplash you off the side of the chair. So Then it will be uncomfortable uh, according to our experiences. And of course we have YA, uh, according to our company name, you, you may figured it out and, uh, and our AI is absolutely unlimited. So I could just uh, rotate uh, for a day. Uh, there is no any limitation on, on AI. So this is the motion range of, of the device. And now a little bit more exciting test is the, the speed test or angular velocity test. It's a little bit scary and you will see very soon why I'm saying that. For the speed test, I need my controller application again. And uh, let me just increase the power to 100%. It's madness. It's going to be fun. Of maximum power. Honestly, I don't recommend to use this power. Uh, so usually we, we say that you should use it on 30 maximum 40% of maximum power. Unless you want to scare your friends. Maybe if you are a, a heavy guy, then, then you can move over 50% or something, but 100% is absolutely not necessary. 30% has always been enough for me on the OR2 as well as the OR3, it seems fine. Necessary, uh, but I just want to demonstrate you how it works, uh, what are the maximum speed of the device. I'm a little bit scared, as I told you. I'm not surprised. Because I already tried it yesterday, and and it was it was very intense. So so let me let me try it. Like really, we'll get the adrenaline pumping. Uh, okay. Uh, so start. I, I will use the manual uh, test application. So let me just come here and go to the other side okay three two one zero. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the vomit oh comet <laughs> it was super intense it's honestly it's it's really scary so my my <coughs> hand is a little bit shaking definitely adrenaline is gonna it gets adrenaline pumping when you're at that speed because it was very intense with this test uh, application. It's hard to control the, the movement, but, uh, but it's like, I, I, I cannot explain you what kind of feeling is that, but it's super fast. Okay, so that was the yam movement. Uh, it was, it was super cool, but I really don't recommend to use uh, this level of power. <laughs> and uh, let me show the pitch very quickly. I hope it will, it will be okay. Okay. That creaking is the seat. It's not the, the unit itself. Okay. Oh. See, it's basically a catapult. Okay, so that was also very intense. Let me show it to you again. Uh, okay. So that was the pitch. And now let me show you the roll. Uh, hopefully it won't be that intense because it's the roll. Oh, okay. All right, that looks a little bit rough. Um, there is holes on each of the feet where you can bolt it down. Um, I've built a platform and bolted mine onto the platform and that did jump up off the ground there. So, you know, that's, that's a consideration. If you have the ability to fix it, I think that will be better. It, it wasn't that intense, but it still hurt. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So, so that is the raw speed. Not, not necessary for a game. I, I'm really sure. Yeah, I, I can't think of any game where it's going to roll you that fast. Sure, I'm really sure. 
All right, uh, so these are the, uh, the three motions. Uh, and, and you have seen how intense the motion if we use the maximum power. And uh, let me show you the vibration as well because it's part of the motion capabilities because we don't have just 3D OF <coughs> but 3D OF plus vibration. Uh, so for that I increase the amplitude a little bit and now the hertz, uh, I mean the frequency. So this is three, that means you, you see three movements uh, in a second but it's not really vibration, it's some kind of uh, movement, but it's still interesting and I can imagine that for some kind of games it, it can, be, uh, can be useful, for example, simulate like, uh, I don't know, it's like I'm, uh, I'm uh, on a horse or something. Train carriage or something maybe. Uh, but if I increase the hertz right now, it, it was three, that- Girlfriend pleasing mode. This for example, <laughs> nine. It's much more like a vibration. This one is... I mean, it's essentially a massage chair as well when you start using that. 15. I'm not sure if, if it's still visible on the camera, but, uh, but I feel a very intense uh, vibration. And uh, that is 20. And from 10, 20 or 25, I don't feel any difference between uh, the different frequencies. So I think somewhere uh, 25 is the maximum what we can, we can show up. Uh, and, uh, and under 25, it's very nice uh, transition between different frequencies. Okay, let, let me just uh, turn it off. So these are the basic motion capabilities. And now let me show you the noise. Just, just on that vibration, um, like a few of us are, are looking at s setting bass shakers on because they give a different fidelity. Um, so I, like I probably won't use vibration once I have that set up because it'll be more accurate with bass shakers, but it's there. And if you can't afford to buy bass shakers because it is quite an investment, um, then at least it gives you something. Noise level of the new device, which also was improved because of the timing belt. Okay, now I just put the microphone on the table and, uh, and now you <coughs> can hear a little bit uh, lower. Sorry for the level. throat clearing. And I recently had COVID, so I'm still clearing up. Outside because outside there is the factory and, and they are producing All right, I'm going to skip this a little bit just because it's just showing the movement with the sound. Chair, it's quite quiet and you can't really hear it. The chair has some, some freaking in the seat again. Now, um, this getting in and out is probably easier by the inclination of the seat now, uh, but I never found it super difficult on the Yaw 2 or this. The Yaw 1 was quite difficult and we had to be very careful, but I guess it's also a bit, a bit about how flexible you are. But that spring on the seat, um, on the desk really is helpful um, at making sure it stays where it should be towards you at least. And now, at the end of the video, I would like to show you a demo gameplay. Uh, for that, we will use Infuse VR for motion compensation and for streaming from the PC to the, to the headset. By the way, the game will be War Thunder. And, uh, and the Infuse VR software, which is a free software available. This, this is one area that I think your has it right. They're really taking a vertical integration approach to making their own motion software, making their own motion compensation software. It is unfortunately limited to Android based headsets, but it does seem that that may be the direction things are generally going. So uh, Deckard Copium, don't know yet, but, um, and also tracker based motion compensation which has been my big holdout for switching to a Quest full-time as my VR headset because I was using Lighthouse-based tracking for motion compensation all through my Your One journey up until now pretty much. I've been waiting for Infuse to get to the point where I was happy with it. Um, so I really think that 
this is the way that they make motion simulation and motion compensation as user-friendly as possible is to tackle the entire stack. Available on Steam will uh, process the motion compensation and the streaming. It's a new version, so it's not available on Steam yet, but it will be available in about uh, one or two weeks. And I will use now a controller-based uh, motion compensation. It's great because in this case, I don't have to calibrate anything. I just start the motion comp compensation and it will work uh, flawlessly. And I use Tr Thrustmaster uh, joystick and throttle. Oh, I would like to see this with heavier um, peripherals. Uh, a friend of mine has like the Thrustmaster TPM rudder pedals and they're heavy, as, like so heavy. He has them on a Yaw 2. 2.5, I guess. So um, I guess the at least for flight, peripherals up here aren't really that heavy, but it's the stuff that's down at the feet end that really can make a difference. And the Genius uh, rudder pedal. And let's see how it works. So, so the accessories are connected to the simulator, so there is no cable to the PC, which is there. Uh, and uh, the headset connects wirelessly to the PC as well, uh, through Infusewear, as I told you. Let me know in the comments, would you buy um, like kits? If, if you had some additional accessories that were like cable ties and stuff like because you can see this cable down here, that looks pretty messy. Um, you know, just kits of stuff like that to help you cable manage the your. Do you think you would buy something like that or you would just get it separately from Amazon or something? Let me know. And, uh, and that's all. So it's an absolutely cordless solution. Uh, there is just only one cable which came into the, uh, to the device, which is the power cable. Okay, guys, uh, so here is the gameplay. Uh, I'm in the War Thunder game uh, on the Misty Coast, which is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Uh, maybe I, I have never seen this, this beautiful uh, game scenery yet maybe it's my fault this is something that's really hard to show is how what you're seeing in the visuals matches what the chair is doing so i can't really talk to how accurate this looks and like my my proof in the pudding will be when i get to test it myself um, with the latest infuse software which i've been told i should get before the end of the week um, so i'm really looking forward to testing that with the the controller-based tracking. Uh, I'm not experienced enough uh, yet. And uh, let me try to go back to the battle part, uh, but a little bit hard to play with that. But anyway, let's uh, try to, to make some progress here. So the motion is, is very interesting because I'm using this uh, new motion compensation uh, technology, not, not the technology new, but uh, so far in Infusewear there was just uh, simulator based uh, motion compensation and now it's a controller based motion compensation and uh, okay, wait a second, I have some task here, okay, okay maybe you see I'm not super, oh, oh my god, Good shot. oh, it's first time in my life that I could uh, <laughs> I could uh, shoot somebody in this game because this uh, War Thunder is very 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 difficult uh, at least for me. Uh, but now I'm, I'm getting better and better. Uh, so so this motion compensation, the controller based motion compensation, is very very interesting because it's perfectly precise okay the precision is what matters that's that's been my <clears throat> my biggest holdout on switching over to infuse full time to date has been that i haven't been able to get what i considered perfectly consistent track um, motion conversation so i'm super super looking forward to this i run out uh, from the guns or or the weapon is uh, overheated so so this motion compensation is is very very precise surprisingly precise and this is the first time i can try it because uh, because it was uh, ready just yesterday uh, literally 
and and the feeling is is very good if i go back backward the motion compensation very precise and the feeling now it's basically it's, it's perfect so i feel that i am oh okay i <laughs> i feel i am upside down i i'm surprised i'm surprised okay maybe boris should be the next target I don't know if you see the, the motion capability, I mean the motion ranges, but uh, from inside it's, it's like unlimited. So you don't feel, maybe sometimes in the roll you feel the limits, but, uh, but the overall experience is that, that you, you just not feel any, any limits. You are in the airplane because of this controller-based motion comp, uh, the, the mo motion comp reaction time is immediate, so you really feel you are in, in the cockpit. Uh, and, uh, and even I feel with my legs uh, the, the central holder, and it just adds some extra realistic <laughs> feeling uh, for, for the overall experience. So I'm, I'm a little bit shocked realistic this new motion compensation the <laughs> I wonder if he's been so busy that he hasn't really had much time to use it a lot himself I wouldn't be surprised he's probably been running around like a headless chicken just trying to make everything happen so yeah he's, they've done a really good job to to me the your three is really what the your two would have been if they had have prototyped it for longer and you know having such a wildly successful Kickstarter can often bite the campaign runners, you know, it can cause a lot of trouble trying to um, fulfill, which we've seen here, but, you know, they've persisted for such a long time now and I, I'm, I'm very, very optimistic that, that everyone's going to be quite happy when they receive their units. The only backside of this motion compensation is that... Uh, we cannot use the hand recognition, so I'm I'm really waiting for the time when we can use controllers and motion and, and the hand recognition. So that whole that was one of the aspects of Infuse VR, and it's it's is a really great idea for sticks, but having that hand recognition for things like mice or keyboards which move around. Um, I don't think was that helpful, but for anything that's fixed in place, I think it is definitely uh, a really cool feature. But I've never ne I've never had it before, and I've never felt it detracted when I played like Elite Dangerous or anything. My hands knew to go to where the stick was, and the surface itself gave me enough input for me to figure out what to use. But I still look forward to seeing it when they do crack that nut again. Um, it will be good. Uh, in the same time because because if, if we could use it now I could visualize the let's go back there so this is the infuse VR logo in VR that is a bit of an immersion breaker I think they should place it maybe directly above your head I don't know because you could still look up maybe down low would be a place to do it because you don't tend to look down or down to the side or something like that but what I've noticed, which again, this might be fixed with the controller-based tracking, is that the, inf the Infuse logo would move around, not, it wouldn't stay in the same place in relationship to where I was facing. I, that's probably because of the issues with the tracking previously. So I'm hope that I hope that will be resolved as well. You can maybe move it to exactly where you want it and it will stay there. I'm really waiting for the time when we can use controllers and, and say traditional uh, motion compensation with the simulator. Uh, by the way, traditional, so this kind of controller-based motion compensation was the first motion compensation technique at the time mm. when we used HTC uh, light, yeah. uh, light tower, so I don't remember the exact name, but something like that. Oh, oh my Lighthouse. God. Almost, almost, almost. It's not All right, we're just seeing else. flying now, so I don't think there's a lot more here, but um, and uh, as, enjoy the yeah. As Zolt has said a few times, um, it's available now. You can make an order. Again, the code 
will give you a discount at checkout. <coughs> um, so I'm going to bring the, the video to an end and I'd love to hear any feedback you've got. Cheers.